Welcome up! In this episode we will talk about the origins of the term politics to understand what it is and why it matters still today. Coming up! Hello there, I'm Understanding Politics and in this channel I talk about political theories and debates to students as well as curious and passionate people just like you. If you are driven here by the title, you will think, well, if he explains what's politics in the first episode, then the series is over, right? As you will understand in the course of the series, reality is a tad more complex. And I'm here especially because I think that every person in the world has the potential to be a force for good. And so the more we are informed, the more we understand. The more we understand, the more we can take the right choices together. The word politics comes from the ancient Greek from the neuter of the adjective politicus, which means, literally, things that concern the polis. The polis was a single self-sufficient unity of organization for a community of people. In other words, it was some sort of city-state, even though neither the word uh, city nor state existed back then. You already know some example, Athens and Sparta. Finally, the complex of institutions that was organizing the life of the polis was called politeia. We have to go back to ancient Greece to explain politics, not because other civilizations did not have political life before them, but they treated politics in an almost scientific way, encoding it in their language and practicing it every day. Something that I will repeat you constantly throughout this series is that you cannot explain an idea without taking into consideration the time it was conceived in. And so, disappointing Plato, we will say that an idea can be born, it develops, it changes through time, and hence is far from being an unchanging element of the sky. Still, our societies are the result of centuries of political engineering and do not resemble polis from ancient Greece. And there are two main reasons for this. Clear-cut separation between public and private life. Representation. For starters, the term society did not come from Greek, it came from Latin, from the word societas, which of course means an organized group of people. But the way we intend it today is much closer to the concept of civil society, whose interpretation is not due to the Romans, but to the German philosopher Friedrich Hegel. So the Greeks did not have a society because they already had a politeia, and in the Agora, which was the square where men entitled to exercise political power could debate and take political decisions, even private lives could become object of public debate. It was not the same for the Romans, where a much more clear distinction between private and public life helped to introduce the concept of corruption. But in Greece, the members of the politeia were exercising their political power directly, at least at the apex of the Athenian democracy. In fact, democracy was invented in Athens. Even the term democracy comes from the ancient Greek, and it's a complex of two terms, demos, which refers to the concept of people, and kratos, yes, him, which literally means power. On the other hand, even though nowadays we talk about democracies, we are actually referring to liberal democracies, because it's the only democracies that we have today. And in liberal democracies, you do not exercise your political power directly, not that often, we will talk about referenda, but you elect representatives that allegedly should represent your interests in the parliament. Another thing to consider when talking about the Athenian direct democracy is that for the members of the Politeia, politics was the major occupation because they did not have to work, they had slaves. Another major drawback is that women had no political rights. In fact, being misogynist was pretty common back then. Aristophanes even wrote a comedy out of the idea of women exercising political rights. And this comedy is called, of course, Women in Parliament. Finally, even though Athens invented democracy, this was not the only form of government that the polis employed throughout its history. Immediately after being defeated by Sparta, the 30 tyrants came to power and they created an oligarchy from the Greek words oligos and arche, which means supremacy of the few. This form of government was employed by Sparta consistently throughout its history. To conclude, politics is very important because it's the way we regulate our living together, and it affects us in things so uninteresting as taxes to things so important such as buying a smartphone of Huawei with an Android operating system. Of course, you don't have to confuse the level of the political debate, which can be very low, with the importance of the task, which politics has. 
If you want to deepen your knowledge or retrace the things that I've said during this video, you can check the video description where I will link all the sources in the references section. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. And if you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel. For us, uh, for I think that I will. Have... Nope. By the way, did you know that in ancient Greece, sex between men was considered more manly and noble than sex between men and women?